a Bolshevik party that came out of the Civil War in 1921 and 1922 had been changed. It was still the Bolshevik party. It still had that energy, it had that democratic life, um, but it was, it was wounded, it was mutilated by the Civil War. Um, and the story of the next decade is basically that the revolution, um, which revolutions in other countries which they had fought for, which they had hoped for, were all defeated, um, that the revolution was isolated in Russia, that the pressures of the environment, the pressures of the economic underdevelopment, the pressures of trying to keep the state machine going in that, those situations, the um, pressures of all the old um, officials and bureaucrats whom they had to call upon to keep the, you know, try to persuade back into um, working, to keep the machine going. Um, those eventually overcame the Bolsheviks and uh, the Bolshevik party degenerated and was then crushed by Stalin, by an element of the Bolshevik party which had nested inside the bureaucracy. And this is how the, uh, the Stalinist version of Bolshevism became well known, became the established version. But before that, something else happened, which um, is quite important for understanding what happened not just to the Stalinists, but to the Marxists who fought against Stalinism. And here we need to look at how did Bolshevism, Bolshevism had come to Russia by people in Russia, Russian socialists, trying to learn from the German socialists. Then Bolshevism comes to the rest of the world by uh, socialists in other countries, Germany, France, Italy, Britain, the USA, India, China, trying to learn from the Bolsheviks. What they learned is um, at first very patchy and if you look at the, the very early communist parties which are formed by socialists trying to do something like the Russian Revolution in their own countries, they're very ramshackle, very haphazard sort of organisations, um, organised in all sorts of different ways um, and generally operating not very efficiently and by um, the early 20s, there's a general understanding. We've got to get this, this, uh, this organisation in shape. We've got to get ourselves in shape. And in 1924-25, um, the, uh, the Russian leadership, as it is then, this is after Lenin's death, this is now... Um, Zinoviev and Kamenev and Stalin, um, who are the key people, they've marginalised Trotsky. They start a campaign where they tell the Communist Party, now we're going to tell you how to be properly Bolshevik. It's called Bolshevization. It happens in 1924 and 1925. This is not yet Stalinism, but what's projected out into the world as a model of Bolshevism is a bit different from the Bolshevism that's made the revolution. In the first place, it's a Bolshevism which has been um, remodelled by the Civil War. And what happens then is Civil War expedients, which are maybe necessary uh, or inevitable in conditions of Civil War, are exported to countries where you have um, legal political life, where um, it's not a civil war at all. Um, and secondly, some of what has happened since the end of the civil war, 
the beginnings of Stalinism, not fully formed Stalinism yet, the beginnings of Stalinism are also exported. So, the communist parties are told, you've got to be Bolshevik, you've got to be better organised, um, which they're quite happy to accept. It is true they need to be better organised. But what they're given as a model of better organisation is firstly, it is organisational. It's being organisationally tighter. It's not the energy and the commitment to sorting out political debates that really distinguish the Bolsheviks. In particular, they're told you need monolithic parties. Not just parties that act together, but parties where everybody follows the same script. Um, and where those who don't follow the script are condemned as following deviations. The word deviation will be used a lot in left-wing politics after this. It wasn't one the Bolsheviks used in their years of building the movement, in their years of making the revolution, indeed even in their years of the Civil War. It becomes the common parlance of the Communist parties outside Russia. So for example in the German Communist Party there's a campaign in 1924 and 1925 against Luxembourgist deviations which is supposed to be the influence of Rosa Luxemburg's theories. It's a monolithic party where there's no factions, no minority factions or tendencies are allowed and where the debate is conducted in terms of there is one correct theory which somebody has, probably the leadership, and there are deviations from it. So what you have here is a caricature of Bolshevism it, um, shaped partly by the experiences of the Civil War, uh, partly by necessary and unavoidable adjustments to a Civil War situation, and partly by the beginnings of Stalinist degeneration in the worker state is exported to the world as the model of what Bolshevism should be under all conditions, under conditions which have, are not of civil war, under conditions of um, working class life, under uh, capitalist regimes of all sorts. That is how the image of Bolshevism becomes transmitted into something else internationally, even before fully-fledged Stalinism.